we're just so grateful. We're grateful that we can be together and come to hear your word, and we give you praise and thanksgiving. I ask you, Lord, to give us uh, speaking, give me words to speak, give us words to hear, Lord, ears to hear. We love your word. We're gathered today, Lord, and all this week because we love your word, and we love you. We want revelation, <clears throat> and we open ourselves up for correction from the Word of God. We want to grow, Lord. We take your Word, and we will come out of here more grown up than we went in, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for healing this week. Thank you for all the people that will be born again and all of the, our eyes will be open to more of the Word of God and our faith will increase and we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You may be seated. This is a great Monday crowd. Hallelujah. Guess what I'm going to talk about? Faith. Faith. We used to go, I've told you this before, but we, we went to most of Brother Hagin's meetings that he had in Tulsa anyway. And uh, we would go up there, you know, and guess what we'd hear? Faith. And, and guess what we needed to hear? Faith. That's right. Glory to God. Faith in the Word of God will fix any situation. And all these years have come and gone. A lot of years have come and gone since Ken and I learned about faith. And we've never found a situation that faith couldn't fix. If we released our faith and held to it. But it wasn't always instant. But we knew after a while that if we just stay firm and we just hold fast to the Word of God and believe in that Word, the situation would be turned around. And that is still true. And guess what? After all these years, we still have to walk by faith. We still have situations that have to be turned around that are impossible in the natural realm. But guess what? God is still on the throne. And He moves at faith. When we say, let there be, He says, where do you want it? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about, we're just going to take a little faith refresher today, first of all, and get, our, get ourselves. I know you're already ginned up. Ken might have already preached on faith. But, we're going to hear it again. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. So welcome, and we're glad you're here. We're going to have a great week. We're going to have an awesome week of the Word of God. You will not go away the same way you came. We'll all grow, and we'll be stronger. And our faith will increase because we're going to hear the Word all week long. Amen. Don't go home early or you'll miss something. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's look at... Uh, Let's look at Jesus' ministry. Let's look first of all in Acts, let's look at Acts 10, 38. We're just going to feed our faith this morning. Let our faith grow. Get inspired by the Word of God. Jesus, that ought to inspire you right there. Our Lord and Savior is the Master. Glory to God. Of what? Of everything. Bless the Lord. Jesus, in, in Acts 10, 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All. Say all. all. Would you have been left out if you'd have been there that day? No. As, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Jesus. You won't be left out here either. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus did the healing. The devil did the oppressing. Jesus overcame the devil, and they were healed. Amen? The devil was never any problem for the Lord because he knew the Word, and he knew what to do with the devil. What do you do with him? 
you resist him. Do you listen to him? Do you just hang around, let him talk to you about all, un, all that unbelief? Or do you say, you get out of here in the name of Jesus? Amen. That's what Jesus told him. Get. So he went about uh, doing good. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today, he's still going about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil. So oppression comes from the devil. Healing comes from God, comes from Jesus. Jesus is the strong one. He's the strong man. He always wins. And when we side with him and his word, we always win. So Jesus was easy to receive from. He went about doing good. Hallelujah. He's still the same. He goes about doing good. He wants to do you good. He wanted to do you good last week. He wants to do you good this week. He'll want to do you good next week. But he has to have one thing. He requires one thing, and that is faith. Believing what he says in the Word is faith. Faith is not hard. Faith is just believing what you see in the written Word and believing what he speaks to you in, in the Spirit. If he calls you to preach and he says, I want you to be a preacher, you get that in your, a minister of God, if you get that in your heart, and he says that to you, then that means he's going to back that up. If he couldn't handle you, he wouldn't have called you. And some of you might be new in the ministry and you're wondering, well, did I miss it? No, you'd know it if you missed it. If you have to ask, you didn't miss it. You're going that direction. But, you know, it's not always, things are not always instant. And that's what throws people off. The, we all like it to be instant. We like it to be quick. But it's not always quick. Uh, you know, it seems to make sense to us that maybe we spent 10 or 15 years making a mess of things. And then we pray in faith and we expect it to be done by the next morning. Well, that's good. And sometimes it's pretty quick. But, you know, sometimes it takes a while to unravel things. So what do we do in the meantime? We stand in faith. We believe God. Hallelujah. So let's look at some places. Look, look at Mark. Uh, let's look at Mark 5, 22. This is one of our favorite faith exploits and people. My, this, these few pages here in Mark got so many notes, I can hardly read it. 522 uh, says, am I in the right place? That's 4. 522, okay. It says, And behold, there comes one of the rulers. Now we're just going to see how faith works in the Gospels here for a little bit. Behold, there comes one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and he besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, or I ask you, or I implore you, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. What was that? That was faith. You, you lay your hands on her and she shall live. So what happened? And Jesus went with him. Jesus responds to faith. Glory to God. And then right as he was going, there came a certain woman, which we're very familiar with, that in verse 25, that had an issue of blood for 12 years. She'd been sick a long time. And what's more, she had suffered many things of many physicians, and it's been all she had. So she was sick, she was broke, she had been, she had been sick for a long time, and she didn't get any better, but she did get worse. So things were looking bad for this woman. There was just one thing that would help her, and that was one person that could help her, and that was Jesus. One thing that could help her, and that was her faith in Him. Now look what happened. You know exactly what happened. She's a very famous woman. And when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. She broke the rules by coming out with an issue of blood, but she was a 
you could say she was a desperate woman. She didn't care about rules at this point. She wanted her healing. She heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind. She had to come through the crowd. And, and now we, she's written down for eternity that we all know the woman with the issue of blood who taught us some things about how to use our faith and how to release faith. She heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind. She touched his garment. That was her point of contact. For she said, see, she's got her words going for her and not against her. She's not saying, I'll never be healed. I've been prayed for before and I didn't get anything and, and I, I don't deserve to be healed. No, she didn't say that. She wasn't thinking that. She said... Uh, it, she heard of Jesus. She came in the press behind. She touched his garment. For she said, if I may, but if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. What was that? That was a, sta a statement of faith. That was faith. She said what she wanted to come to pass. She said what she believed would come to pass if she could get up there to him. Now, she, she put her own param parameters around this. She said, if I touch him, I'm healed. Glory to God. That's faith. That's how faith talks. And she did what it took to touch him. She came in the press. She fought her way through. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes. She didn't really even say him. She said, if I just can touch his clothes... I shall be whole. Here was a woman with no hope. The doctors had done all they could for her, but somehow faith came up in her. And she got this bright idea. It was a bright idea. It was a light idea. If I just get to where Jesus is, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. So she got out of that place where she was, she fought her way through the crowd, which was not easy. And remember that she's sick. She's probably not very strong physically. But she said something and she acted on something. And verse uh, 29 says, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Immediately, in other words. The fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt the power of God enter her. And Jesus knew that power had gone out of him. Verse 30 says he knew that virtue, knowing in himself, he knew in his spirit that uh, virtue had gone out of him. And he turned to say, who touched me? <clears throat> and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. He was looking for the one that had the touch of faith. Now, he was being pressed, the scripture says. They were pressing in on him. You know how people press in when they, they want to receive something, but they weren't all pressing in in faith. That's what made the difference. Believing that when I touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, you know that same thing, that same uh, activity of faith, the same way that woman got her healing is the way you get anything from God. It's the way you get money. It's the way you get your family saved and born again. It's the way you get a better job. You press in in faith. You say what you believe, and you believe based on the Word of God. And you say things. You might go in for a job interview, get turned down. You might go in for another one, get turned down. You might go in for another one, get turned down. What do you do? Do you say, I I'm not ever going to find a job? You know, Aunt Susie calls you and you say, I just, don't, I'm just, I, I just can't get anywhere. I'm not ever going to find a job. No, you keep saying, I have the perfect job. I have. I believed I've received it. Now, now, if you believe you receive it, that means you have it. So we're allowed this blessing. If we believe we receive it by faith, then we can take it and we can say it. Receive it. That word receive 
means to take. If you've taken the job by faith, you've got it. If you've taken the, the, uh, the healing by faith, you've got it. You need to see yourself with it. You need to talk yourself with it. You don't need the next time somebody in the family calls to go over your symptoms because you're healed. Sympathy won't help you any. I mean, like, people like sympathy, you know, but there's no power in sympathy except to keep you where you are. But if you've got it, you've got it. And you've got the testimony of it. I've got my healing. This woman had faith. She said, if I just get close enough to touch his garment, I shall be made whole. She said it and she did it. Now the same way works, same thing works with your money, with believing God for your family, whatever it is. That's the way faith works. She was one of the first people we learned about that had faith. We learned what she did and we realized if we do the things she did, we can receive whatever it is we want or desire from God that's in line with his word. And all good things come from God. So you can't really find a good thing that doesn't come from God. Now, there may be things that the world considers good, but, you know, the world's out. They don't know what they're doing. They're under the curse. They're in the dark. If you follow after the world's thinking, you'll be in the dark with them. The only way for us to come out to live in victory is to walk by faith in the, in the Word of God. If we can find it in the Bible, we can have it. And what does the Scripture say? This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So God's given us the Word, and He gives us the faith that comes from the Word, and we can overcome anything in the world bad. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't be lazy and do that, though, because, you know, you... you uh, the, the devil's not dead. Too bad. But he's still around. He's cursed. He's snaggletooth. He's been, had the sap beat out of him. But he's persistent. That's what Brother Hagin said about him. He is a persistent cuss. One thing you can say about the devil, he said, is that he is, one good thing is, that he is a persistent cuss. And that's absolutely the truth. So what do we have to do? We have to be more persistent than he is. But we got power on our side. We got the Holy Ghost on our side. We got the angels on our side. We've got Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Who has defeated the devil and everything he has, he's been whipped. Satan's a defeated foe. I'm telling you, the Bible says that Jesus went into hell and made a show of him openly. He didn't just send him a letter. He didn't email him. He went to his house. He went to where he lives. And he beat the compound stuffing out of him. And he never has gotten over it. Glory to God, I've preached myself happy. a defeated foe. Jesus has triumphed over him, the scripture says. And guess what? We're one with him. We're in. When we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, we, we become one with Jesus. We are in him. The Bible's full of in him scriptures. In him this. In him that. In Jesus we are these things. We're all those things where it says in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So we should always be in victory. Danke, dass Sie heute Victory Worte des Glaubens gesehen haben. Die deutsche Ausgabe des monatlich erscheinenden Magazins Believers Voice of Victory wird Ihren Glauben stärken und kann auch auf unserer Webseite gelesen oder heruntergeladen werden. Sie können auch den monatlichen Partnerbrief und die täglichen Andachten aus Glauben zum Glauben per E-Mail erhalten. 
Sie können im Sieg leben und das Leben von Menschen verändern. Vergessen Sie bis zum nächsten Mal nicht, Gott liebt Sie und Jesus ist Herr.